Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Mohammed, and today we're gonna be discussing how we can make our API much more faster by introducing caching into our application. We're gonna be discussing two types of caching, an in-memory caching and utilizing Redis caching. This is a new feature that has been introduced within .NET 8. So without further ado, first of all, we're gonna be discussing how this will work, and then we're gonna be discussing the implementation. So let's get started. So what I have here is my application, but before we jump into the code, I'm gonna go back to my web browser and I'm gonna basically explain what's gonna happen right now. So what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have a server. So let's have a server here. So this is the server that we're gonna be having. So for this server here is we're gonna have all of the requests coming into it. And basically the server is gonna communicate with our database. And basically this we have to communicate with each other. Now we're gonna have a lot of different clients. So I'm just gonna say laptop. And these are going to be basically the clients that I'm going to be utilizing in order for them to communicate with my application. So I'm going to say only I'm going to have two clients right now and these two clients will be responsible for handling and these two clients will be responsible for actually communicating with my server directly. So every time a single client will have to do a request, the request will come to the server, the server will check the database and then it will return back the information. So we're always going to have a level of dependency here and this dependency is going to be basically communicating with my database. So we're going to have a dependency between our application, between our server and our database in order for us to always, always get the information from there. So this can actually be beneficial and it could be, uh, it can create a downfall. So why it could be beneficial? If you wanted to always get the latest up-to-date information, we can actually uh, utilize it directly. But sometimes well, our information will not change that frequently. So for example, our information can only change once a day or twice a day. So we don't really need to get every single time the latest uh, information from the database. What we can do is we can actually try to, we can cache the information somewhere rather than relying on the database. Because basically every time we do a communication between a server and the database, this communication here is gonna be expensive from resources to network communication to time and it's going to make it much more slower and basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be introducing caching on the server level so all of the information which the database generates it's going to be actually stored inside the cache that we're going to be utilizing and this information that's going to be stored inside the cache is going to be a lot it's going to be much more faster to actually extract from the database because the cache lives inside the memory here and it's a much more faster way to get the information the information so rather than relying on the network connection to the database to extract the information we're relying on the information inside the cache so let's say this for example so right now what's going to happen if my request is going to go from the first client to the server it's going to go to the database it's going to score the information get the information from the database and then once it gets the information from the database it's going to store the information in cache and then it's going to return back the information to my user so that's going to be the main process so it's going to go from my client to my server the server to the database the server will store information in cache and then it will send it back to the client so what happened now if client 2 wants the same information so again it's gonna go to my ask the server for it i'm gonna make this a different color for a different client and then the difference then to go into the database is gonna go directly to the caching and it's gonna get it directly from there and then we're gonna be returning the data back to the client so we're basically eliminating the need to go to the database directly in order for us to get the information back and this is going to be one of the main benefits is basically the faster response time so this is one type of caching another type of caching is we're going to be utilizing redis cache and the main reason that we want might want to utilize redis cache rather than the built-in in-memory cache let's say this application crashes for some reason all of our caching mechanism will go and all of the caching information will go we need to restart from scratch or if for example you want to scale up this application to run on multiple servers we don't really want every single server to manage its cache we need a central location to manage the cache for all of our application and this is where this comes into place so this is also a very 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 fast uh, way where we can actually store information and extract them and this is why we're going to be exploring today the in-memory one and the redis one so now that we have understood the logic behind these two let's go back to our code and let's start building building our in-memory caching so in order for us to build the in-memory caching what we need to do is we're going to put builder dot services dot add output cache then i'm going to specify the options here and then the nice thing about the output cache is we can specify a default caching solution or basically default caching policy and we can have a custom caching policy 
and we can use the, these based on our needs. So we're going to see how we can define a default caching policy first, and this should be pretty straightforward. So we're going to say options dot add base policy, and what we do from here is basically we specify the configuration. So I can say x x dot set let's say uh, expiry, and the expiry will take a timestamp. So I can say timestamp from let's say minutes. So we can say the default caching policy is going to be for every request 10 minutes. And basically that means that every single request that we do is going to be cached inside our in-memory uh, in memory for 10 minutes, which is pretty fast and pretty good. Now let's say we want to introduce a custom policy. It's just this is also should be very simple. So we can say options dot add policy and we need to give a policy a name. I'm going to say my let's say custom five. So that means that it's going to have a five minute uh, caching. And from here, I need to specify the options. So I'm just going to put x, x dot expiry, and I can say timestamp from minutes to five minutes. So that means that you're here, I was able to create my own base policy. And this means that's going to be applied for everything. And the other one is going to be my custom policy, which I can implement however I want to different controllers. So this will actually override the default base policy that currently exists. So this is basically what I've done here in order for me to introduce output cache into my application. And this feature is not new. This feature has been introduced within uh, .NET 7. So I'm going to say here output cache. So now that we have specified this in my services, now I need to actually enable it. So I'm going to put up dot use output cache okay great so now actually this is running let's run our application and see it in action okay perfect now let's go to my web browser i'm gonna go to my get drivers i'm gonna click on try it, try it out i'm gonna click on execute and we can see the first time it takes a bit of time to get back the information and i'm gonna click execute again and we can see we get the information in an instant because everything here is being cached and we can see here that we're not doing any more calls to the database so what i want to do as well i'm just gonna also put a breaking point on that so we are actually able to see if we are actually calling the database so where is it get all drivers so here i'm just going to do another execute and we can see here my execution is we're not even hitting that endpoint because basically we're getting the information from the cache so i'm going to stop my application and this should basically automatically remove all of the built-in caching that i have i'm going to run this again we have cleared the cache now so now we sh it should hit this endpoint i'm going to go back here click on execute we can see it had that endpoint and if we take a look here we can see that we have six results and if we run it we're able to see it but now if i run this again we can see it's not even hitting this one because all of this information is being stored inside my in-memory caching of my application perfect so now let's see the new feature that has been actually before we do that let us add that custom policy that we have added and see how that will work so here in order for us to add that custom policy what i need to do is i need to add an attribute to the action that i want to introduce this action policy to and this attribute will allow me to actually directly implement that policy there i don't need to go to any other types of configuration to make it work so the way we do that is i can say output cache and then from here we can see policy name and this is going to be the policy name that I have utilized inside my program.cs. And in my case, it was my custom five. And now in this scenario, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be implemented. My custom policy for five minutes It's going to override the default 10 minute policy that I have. And if we run this again, you can see it running. And now if I click on execute for the first time, it goes to my database and then execute again. We can see it's getting it from the memory and it's not coming to the database. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to decreased this from uh, five minutes to seconds so i'm going to make it from seconds just so we can see it working in action i'm going to make it 15 seconds so the cache will only last 50 seconds so we can actually see it running much more faster so every time we do a call directly to it it's gonna get the information cache it and then it's gonna the cache will only last for 15 seconds and then we once we keep on trying after 50 seconds it will call again the database so right now it should go to the database perfect we got the information and now if i keep on crying it will not go to the database if we wait 15 seconds let's give it a bit more time and as we can see here after 15 seconds i directly called back the cache has been invalidated and we got a call back for the database to get the information which is perfect okay great now that we have covered this built-in mechanism for caching now we're going to be discussing how we can implement the this one and this is also pretty straightforward so what i want to do first is i want to install a package so inside my terminal i want to install the following package dot add package 
and this one is gonna be Microsoft ASP not core dot output caching dot stack exchange redis perfect now that has been completed successfully i'm gonna check my program.cs so we can see here that uh, sorry my cs proj and we can see here through cs proj that this has been installed successfully and we can see it has the latest version of version 8 okay perfect so now that we have done this the way that we're gonna be optimizing this is i'm gonna go to my program.cs and i'm gonna add the follower i'm gonna say builder dot services dot add stack it change redis output cache and again from here i'm gonna specify the options and then for the options here what i need to do is i need to specify the instance name and the instance name here is going to be the redis name that i want to actually uh, utilize and for this and my instance name here is going to be the instance name that i want to provide for my redis instance so i can say formula one cache i can call it whatever i want and then what i need to do after that is i need to specify my where does my redis server live so i'm going to say options dot configuration and then here i'm going to specify my uh, redis server so currently i don't have redis running but i'm gonna put localhost and i'm gonna make it run on port the default redis, uh, redis port which is going to be 6379 okay great so what i have here is basically i have enabled my redis cache and basically through this i have basically allah defined an instance and i defined the configuration so this is not running yet so we're going to be doing this so now what i want to do is i want to open my terminal and inside here what i want to do is i want to use my docker container for redis so how can i do that pretty straightforward so we're going to put docker run i want to specify the name of the uh, container once it runs so I'm going to put dash dash name redis ss for uh, stack, ex uh, stack exchange and then basically what I want to do here is I want to specify the port and as we can see here the port that it has to run on which is going to be 6379 so that's going to be the one I'm going to utilizing 6379 and this is going to connect to the built-in port of 6379 and then I'm going to make it run in detach and then what I want to do is I want to get the endpoint of where the, or basically the name of my Docker uh, image that's going to be utilizing. The way the one that I'm going to be utilizing is let me open up the link so we can see it there. If I go to my web browser inside my web browser, this is going to be the link. So I'm going to be utilizing Redis forward slash Redis stack server. So we can copy this basically and let me go back to my terminal and this is going to be the image that I'm going to be using with the latest. So this will take a minute or so in order for it to come uh, and be actually available on my machine so once that is done we'll continue okay perfect so now that my redis instant is actually running and we can see it has been downloaded successfully i'm just gonna put docker ps and if i take a look here these are all of the containers that are running and we can see here the first one is my redis stack exchange and this is its name redis ss is actually running as it should inside my local machine so with this means that my redis instant is actually running as it should be actually it needs to be 6379 not 70 so let me stop this again and let me just do docker stop so it's always a good thing to investigate so we can see here this is not the right port so i'm gonna stop this and then i'm gonna run this again and i'm gonna specify the right port here so it's gonna be 6379 and now let me remove the container and now basically i can just run it again and now that it has run successfully, I can go back to Docker PS. I can see it here that my Redis SS is running. And if I go back to my Redis Explorer, let's do a refresh. We can see it's actually running and it's completely, there's nothing there. There's no keys, there's no nothing. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to my application. And inside my application, I'm going to run it. Perfect. And now I'm going to go back to my web browser. So let's execute this. Run. And if we go to my Redis browser, I click on refresh. We can see here that this is my information here and we can see here that this is taking the 15 seconds time limit so we can see first of all that time to live is getting lower and lower and now once it reaches zero it will automatically disappear because now the cache has expired so if i go back here into my program.cs and i change this from 15 seconds to let's say to 15 minutes and i stop and run this again and if i go back to my web browser and I'm gonna click on execute. We're gonna go to the database now. And now if I go back to my Redis cache, let me refresh this and I click on here. 
we can see that this cache has a 15 minute time to live, which is gonna be what we have specified. And this information will contain all of the driver information that I have. So now if I go back here, if I keep on click on execute, all of this request will not gonna be going to the database. All of this information is gonna be directly, directly coming from my uh, Keradates cache. And we can see here how much faster this is rather than having to rely. And basically we are elevating the pain from my database in order for me to have a much more faster and much more streamlined API. I hope this video was helpful. Uh, please, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments down below. And uh, I hope you benefit from uh, this enhanced speed when it comes to ASP.NET and our APIs. Have a great day.